guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Zoo Tiles Hime, a strategic tile placement game for two players. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play and is for ages 13 and up by Zoo Studios. In the game Zoo Tiles, you're trying to make two by two grids of corresponding animals from the zodiac, whether it be yours or your opponents, or you're attempting to battle your opponent's animals, defeat them, and score them for points in glorious combat. If you can get those 12 points before the other player, you will succeed in the game, but beware, actions and reactions can happen, which can change the tides of battle in Zoo Tiles Hime Starter Series 1. Now I'll come down and show you the game, I'll explain how it's played, and then I'll come up and give you my review. So here is Zoo Tiles and everything included in the game, which will be a box, the rule book, uh, two action and reaction tiles, and then two separate decks, one for each player. And each deck has its own unique Zodiac animals. This one here has like the tiger and the horse and the dog. And the other one has the pig and it has the uh, ram and the bunny rabbit. And of course there are additional animals too, which means there's probably going to be additional content for this game, depending I guess on how well it does. Uh, each each player is going to take all of their tiles, shuffle them up or pile shuffle them, and then deal them out into five areas or five stacks of eight tiles. Then from anywhere, take five tiles and these tiles will be your hand. After that, you're ready to begin the game. Select a player to go and they will start by taking their turn. But just before you take your turn, remember to make sure that you have at least one of the basic starting animals in your hand, one with a strength and an intellect value. Let's go over the tiles first before we begin our turn. First of all, this is a tile. The large circle indicates uh, your animal, or the specific animal that this tile is. And then every small circle indicates the uh, compatibility of the different other tiles in the game. So this tiger is compatible with the horse, the dog, and the pig. And here is another tiger. Here's the horse. The horse is compatible with a horse, a ram, a dog, uh, a lion, and I think that's, I don't know, a dragon, I believe. Uh, additionally, each tile has strength and intellect. These are what you need in order to defeat your opponent in combat, and then of course the name of the tile. The other tiles are going to be actions and reactions. And on the tile, if you see an A, that's an action. If you see an R, it's a reaction. Typically actions are things you play on your turn and you can play two of them. And reactions are things that you can play uh, countering another player's action. So you can create a stack, so to speak. And when you stack these up, it'll be actions and reactions. And you'll kind of go down the stack like you would in Magic the Gathering, the Magic the Gathering stack. You'll go through each one of them and do what they say, resulting in whatever is left. So to begin the game, you have to take your hand. I got to make sure I got my animals and all of them. Yep, there's a bunch of bunny rabbits in this one. And then you can place a tile with strength and intellect into the playing area. So I can put an obstacle, which is basically another animal of sorts, and um, it doesn't have any cooperative animals with it. That's the one drawback, I suppose, to these tiles. And I can place it down onto the field or one of my basic animals. When I've placed, I then have two other things I can do as far as tiles go. I can place an action stack, so I can put down uh, an action stack there, and then my opponent can put a reaction, and I can put another action, and after that we would reveal them in order and see what they do. And then I could go ahead and do this again, another action stack after that. I'm also able to discard two tiles from my hand if I wanted to, and I could draw a tile from this stack here. And I could also go ahead and start a battle. If I have one of my tiles here and an opponent has one of theirs next to me, I can start a combat battle. So for instance, if I had this rabbit and this horse here, and I wanted to, on my turn as the horse player, attack this player here, I would check my strength and intellect and see if I had a... Uh, a, a larger amount on both ends against my opponent and if I did I would win that tile and I would put it into my point scoring area. That's how you win the game by getting those 12 points. Uh, additionally when you are battling against uh, another an, another tile for instance you will actually go ahead and check to see how many allies are on the field. So for instance, in this case, if the board looked like this here, I would have to be fighting this horse against this rabbit. This rabbit would have one ally because it's adjacent, and I would have one ally because it is adjacent. I would total my strength and my int, check their total strength and int, and if I am higher, I would beat this tile here. That's how you're able to defeat the tiles in combat. Another interesting thing too, is when you have a set of four tiles here, if 
all of them match adjacent tiles. So for instance, this is a tiger and this is a tiger. So these two match, but rabbits do not match with tigers. So in this case, I would not score this four, this two by two grid here. But if these two were adjacent with each other and they were allies or matched together and these two were also adjacent and matched and these two as well and these two as well, then whoever placed the tile down, the fourth tile in the square here, will collect all tiles for their points. So it's kind of a way to basically score without actually having to start any type of combat. However, if they do not match, then they will stay on the field. Also, when you place tiles, you'll place them facing yourself. So these two tiles would be for this player and these two tiles would be for this player over here. And that's pretty much how the game goes. At the end of your turn, you will uh, draw a tile and uh, then play will pass. So in this case here, I could play a tile down here just like this and then I will take a tile. Then the next player is going to go ahead and choose to place a tile down and then they will take a tile and you can draw tiles anywhere in your stack. Uh, these are these stacks here, of course. And then maybe I want to go ahead and do something like, I'll play another tiger. I could choose to enter combat, in which case I would have to choose a random tile from my hand or one, one, one of my choosing, put it down into a battle stack. And then my opponent would then have the ability to choose to do any reactions that she or he may have, or they can simply pass, tally up the points, Whoever has the most strength and intellect combined against the animal that they are choosing to fight will then uh, be the winner and take the ally as points or the character as points. And then of course the player can choose to do things like discarding two and drawing. Whenever you discard, there's a discard pile on your right hand side and the point scoring will be on your left. And you'll keep going back and forth playing tiles down. Um, the only other thing I needed to explain to you guys is that, of course, some of these uh, specific uh, there are specific like, items and obstacles and putting them down, they are not technically animals, so you're not going to be able to score tile squares with them, but you can use them for combat and any other type of maybe action it might have or specific passive ability that may be on the tile. Like, for instance, this, this action here I can play on my turn. I can discard a ram that I control from the playing area, and I can choose an opponent randomly select half of the tiles rounded up in their hand and they'll discard those tiles. So at the cost of losing a ram here, the player of my choosing is going to lose half of their hand rounded up. A very, very powerful move indeed. And of course, you don't have to choose to play tiles if you don't want to. You don't have to play actions or reactions if you don't want to. But remember, the less you play on the field, the more control your opponent will have. And eventually, if you let them, they will actually score a two by two grid here. So as you can see, a tiger here, um, uh, would be adjacent to these guys, which would work. However, this tiger would not because it is the tigers are not, don't work with each other. So I'd have to find something maybe like, oh, I don't know, a dog here. This would be an accurate two by two grid for the game zoo tiles. You would take all these guys and score them. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game zoo tiles. Get to 12 points first and you're the winner. There's a lot of complexities, of course, utilizing action and reaction stacks, utilizing the battle stack, and any, of course, passive benefits or bonuses, things like rabbit holes, where instead of placing rabbits down onto the field, you can use as a reaction or an action, you can place rabbits uh, in here, basically and then you can pop them out. So some unique little twists and turns there. But anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Let's come up and I'll review it. So Zoo Tiles is a TCG of sorts, but instead of TCG, like trading card game, it'd be like a TTG, a trading tile game of sorts, because you're going to have your own unique deck, which is gonna come with these Zodiac animals, actions and reactions, and you're playing a game of strategy. And you kind of combine your specific animals to work together. I imagine there's going to be uh, expansions to this game that are going to kind of incorporate into how you make your own deck. But from what is here, you're gonna have two separate decks, and you're gonna be placing down a tile Tile, using up to two actions on your turn, discarding tiles to gain new ones, and of course, battling. And the two different ways to win makes it a unique style of play. Do you want to remove tiles from the board and score them as points by defeating them in combat, or do you want to get those two by two sets scoring four points? Now, of course, it's kind of a game of chicken, a little bit of a mix with the type of actions you may have in your hands and how the uh, animals are going to interact with the actions that you have. Will you be kind of strategically placing them down for a later turn and understanding in what ways the tiles need to move based on the actions that you have either in your deck or in your hand at, 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 at as it currently stands? And so there's a lot of 
there's a lot of strategy involved in this game, more than I would expect, too. I thought this was going to be more like a family game where you're placing tiles down and it's pretty straightforward matching or something like that. No, this is a this is one of those com complex uh, trading card game style games. It's very similar in, in ways to like Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! in the fact that you have to make very important choices based on what you have available in your hand. You're going to also be able to mulligan at the beginning if you don't have a basic animal to start with. You'll need to place them down. You can choose to not place them down. However, the less you place out, the more likely your opponent is going to catch up and maybe score some points. Or you can wait and kind of decide when the best time is to play something and take your turn and get those actions and score. Uh, you have to make really wise decisions based on the way that your deck is made or the deck is starting out for you. And this is the starter set, so there's two different types of decks. But in each of the decks, the animals function differently. Pigs, for instance, are going to move around slowly around the board. Rabbits can kind of work together or be on their own and be kind of like that tiny rabbit of doom that defeats all of the other opponent's animals, if you can do it correctly. And of course, you have things like horses, which are very powerful in nature and also have unique actions that them move farther and faster and quicker. Or a Trojan horse that can pretend to be a horse or turn into a horse. And so there's a lot of different choices that you can make throughout this game. The, the now let's talk about this. The quality of the game. The quality is hi i love all the tiles here they're nice and thick and sturdy these guys are going to last you a long time artwork is beautiful fits perfectly on the tile in every way the design is great as well um the different animals also correlate to not only the zodiac but the different type of like gals that you'll see on there so for instance this is a tiger gal and she actually has little tiger uh, ears and the pig lid and the um, dog and so on and so forth they all share kind of like an animal slash human connection in a way and i i, I dig that as well uh, the game is pretty straightforward once you get through the rules and understand how placement works. Generally speaking, it's not really the complexity of the game, but more the complexity of each of the cards and actions and how they work, and the, of course the reactions as well, and understanding the stack and how you have to utilize the different cards based on when you play them, and uh, that is where really the complexity lays. Uh, the negatives I would say about the game are like any other TCG. You don't know what you're going to get in your hand to start off with. You might have to mulligan. Another opponent might have a better hand to start off off with. Uh, both of the decks, however, are very fairly balanced and you have an opportunity of winning even when you feel like you're about to lose. You can kind of come back from that and even landslide victory if you're smart enough. This comes down to a lot of strategy and a bit of luck as well based on what you get in your hand. But if you make the right choices, it might not even matter anyway. Overall, I really had an enjoyable experience with Zoo Tiles. This is going to be for those gamers who want something a little more complex, who like trading card games or games that involve card strategy, and of course those who enjoy, enjoy tile placement. A little bit of puzzling mechanisms are kind of present in this game in certain circumstances, getting those two by two tiles, which is where Kelly enjoyed the game, whereas I kind of like the mechanisms and the mechanics of the tile placement and combat nature. But overall, an excellent, fun little game. It's something I would definitely suggest for you guys to take a look at if it sounds remotely interesting for you. Otherwise, though, if you don't like TCGs or games that involve card strategy, this is not going to be one of those games for you. It's not necessarily really a family game. It's not going to be easy for kids to play. But nevertheless, I personally enjoy it. And I know pretty much anybody in my house that's played games here is going to also like to play the game Zoo Tiles. Okay, my review. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Zoo Tiles Hime, the starter set one. I'm excited to see what else they produce for this game because it is, uh, is uniquely strategic and something kind of a fresh of breath there for a game that I was not expecting this to be. Uh, you can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more every Sunday, our live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST. And of course, you can go ahead and join us on Patreon for a dollar. It does help us support our live streams and other content and we do also do giveaways on our streams when we can thank you guys so much for watching and as always i look forward to defeating your stack next time